I'm going to read a story to you. And the story is called The Kissing Hand by Audrey Penn. And the illustrations are by Ruth E. Harper and Nancy M. Leak. The Kissing Hand. Chester Raccoon stood at the edge of the forest and cried. I don't want to go to school, he told his mother. I want to stay home with you. I want to play with my friends and play with my toys and read my books and swing on my swing. Please, may I stay home with you? Mrs. Raccoon took Chester by the hand and nuzzled him on the ear. Sometimes we have to do things we don't want to do, she told him gently. Even if they seem strange and scary at first, but you will love school once you start. You'll make new friends and play with new toys and read new books and swing on new swings. Besides, she added, I know a wonderful secret that'll make your nights at school seem as warm and cozy as your days at home. Wait, 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 just a minute. That doesn't make any sense. Hmm. All right, guys, I'm going to have to try to ask a question for you here. Um, if you're like me, there I am. If you're like me, you're wondering, wait, Mr. Ashby, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, and by the way, I bet you didn't even know I was watching the movie with you, did you? Ha! I see knock up on you for this one. But I'm going to be interrupting this movie a little bit, uh, this read aloud, because I have a question. Did you catch in the story she said that they were going to school? I'm going to back up here. They were going to be going to school at night, and they were going to be staying home during the day. Wow, that just doesn't make any sense to me. Ah, in fact, I'm going to write that question down. Why? Well, why do they why do they go to school at night? I just don't get it. Maybe you have an answer for that. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, well, you know, good readers, they ask questions while they read. If something doesn't make sense, they stop and they think about it. And sometimes they have good questions to ask. I guess maybe I'll have to ask my mom later. Maybe for now, we'll, we'll, we'll keep reading. Warm and cozy as your days at home. Chester wiped away his tears. He looked interested. A secret. What kind of secret? A very old secret, said Mrs. Raccoon. I learned it from my mother, and she learned it from hers, and it's called the kissing hand. The kissing hand, asked Chester. What's that? I'll show you, Mrs. Raccoon took Chester's left hand, spread his tiny fingers into a fan, and leaning forward, she kissed Chester's right in the middle of his palm. Chester felt his mother's kiss rush from his hand, up his arm, and into his heart. Even his silky black mask tingled with special warmth. Mrs. Raccoon smiled. Now, she told Chester, now whenever you feel lonely and you need a little loving from home, just press your hand to your cheek and think, Mommy loves you. Mommy loves you. And that very... That makes me wonder something, too. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but you know, I am a very good reader, and you know what good readers do. Good readers stop and think, and they ask questions when something doesn't make sense. So I guess I don't really get it. His mom kissed him on the palm. Okay, I get that. And then somehow that kiss is on his hand forever. Like what if he washes his hands? If he washes his hands, does that go away? Can he never wash his hand ever again? I don't really understand what's going on here. Or, or maybe is it magic? Did his mom do something magic? So when he puts his palm to his face, that's supposed to make him feel better? Is that magic? What if he washes his hand and it goes away? You know, I just, I don't exactly get it. But that is something good readers do. You know, good readers ask questions 
when they don't understand. All right, I guess we'll keep reading and see what else is happening. Berry kiss will jump to your face and fill you with toasty, warm thoughts. She took Chester's hand, carefully wrapped his fingers around the kiss, and now do be careful not to lose it, she teased him. Oh, but don't worry. When you open your hand and wash your food, I promise you the kiss will stick. Chester loved him. Well, I guess I got an answer to one of my questions. If he washes his hands, the kiss will stick. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better. At least I have one answer to one of my questions. His kissing hand. Now he knew his mother's love would go with him wherever he went, even to school. And that night, Chester stood in front of his school, and he looked thoughtful. Suddenly he turned to his mother, and he grinned. Give me your hand, he told her. Chester took his mother's hand in his own and unfolded her large, familiar fingers into a fan. Next, he leaned forward and kissed the center of her hand. Now you have a kissing hand, too, he told her. And with a gentle goodbye, and I love you, Chester turned and danced away. All right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mr. Ashby's gonna have to interrupt again. Sometimes when I'm reading a real book, I really, I just set the book down and I, and I do some stopping and thinking. Hmm, all right, there's another thing I just don't get. Why did Chester Raccoon, why did he kiss his mother's hand? He opened his mom's hand, he kissed his mom's hand, and now his mom has a kissing hand. Why would he do that? I don't understand. I don't know. I don't know. So now there's a few things I don't get about the story. I don't know why they go to school at night in our home during the day. I don't get that. I also, I don't understand like about the kissing hand. Is it magic? I don't really understand exactly what it is. And the third thing I don't get is why did he give a kissing hand to his mom? Those are my three questions for, for this story. I mean, I like the story. I like the story, but I do have some questions. But good readers, good readers ask questions when they read. All right, I won't interrupt. I'm going to go ahead and finish the story. Mrs. Raccoon watched Chester scamper across a tree limb and enter school. And as the hoot owl rang in the new school year, she pressed her left hand to her cheek and smiled. The warmth of Chester's kiss filled her heart with special words. Chester loves you, it sang. Chester loves you. I love you. The Kissing Hand. That is a great story. I have to tell you, I have read that story to my students every single year I've taught first grade, usually on the first day of school. And what we normally do is we trace our fingers with some construction paper and cut it out. And their homework for that night is that their mom has to go home, put a bunch of lipstick on, and kiss that hand and put a big smooch on it. And then they bring that back to school and they put it in their desk or their locker or somewhere where they might need it. To a little reminder of mom's love. Well, um, my three questions, we may have to deal with that tomorrow. I don't know if we have much more time, but don't worry, I wrote them down so that you can, that we can remember my questions and go back and reread because that's what good readers do. They ask questions when they don't understand. And we'll come back to those questions tomorrow. For now, I wanna show you a couple of new things um, in our daily schedule. And I'm gonna give you a sneak peek into what's called our virtual classroom, okay? so. Let me show you where I got that book. I have a reading workshop virtual classroom. It looks a little bit like the daily schedule and it'll be, it'll be linked on the daily schedule. Um, in the virtual classroom, right now I just have four books, but I'm building more. In fact, I might be filling the shelves with books. Each book is something that with your finger, you can touch on, like here's the kissing hand. Like touch that and I can go and watch that one just like we did. 
Maybe I want this one. Me and my cat, I can touch that one, right? Or maybe it's this one over here, the coal thief. Maybe I'll touch that one and read it. So these are kind of neat, and I'll put some more up there that I think might be good for first grade. I'm going to move this chair down a little bit. Um, anyway, this is our virtual classroom. I understand that sometimes, like first graders, cannot be reading right now for 30 minutes on their own. Later in the year, you'll be reading probably for 30 minutes on your own. But right now, maybe 10 minutes is what I've been suggesting. And what are you going to do with those other minutes? Well, in the daily schedule, let me pop that open a minute. In the daily schedule, right, you have uh, in the reading workshop one, this is uh, yesterday's schedule, but you have the extra resources. Well, pretty soon, there's going to be a link there to the virtual classroom. And you'll be able to click, and that'll bring you over to this. And if you have extra time, you can read some extra stories or have them read to you. I might even put in some games or some other things that you might want to do that relate to reading also. So I really wanted to share that with you. Now, you don't have much to do for the rest of your reading time today other than go on Epic. Or if you have your own books at home, you could read those instead. That's fine. And again, we're looking for 10 minutes right now, 10 minutes of independent reading. That means read to self. You're reading to self time, um, 10 minutes. But during that time, maybe you're practicing reading like we did yesterday, sounding words out. Maybe you're um, thinking and asking questions while you read. Something doesn't make sense? <laughs> I don't get it. Well, that's a time to be asking questions. Good readers ask questions. Tomorrow we're going to revisit the kissing hand and we'll maybe come up with some answers for my questions. So that's it for today. I'll see you guys a little bit.